As far as injuries go, uh, Jay Howard won't practice today, and Dontari Poe won't practice today. So um, Dontari's making um, progress, and um, it's just a matter of back spasms and calming down a little bit. Um, he's the last. He, both those guys are the last guys that want to want to miss, but it is what it is there. So, listen. We, um, uh, shout out to Tyreek Hill uh, for the AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Um, tribute to the kid. Uh, probably, like I said, I'm probably more proud of him for what he's doing off the field than on the field. But um, you know, it's well deserved. The award's well deserved. Uh, but there's a lot that goes into that too. So, um, for him to even be be out here doing what he's doing. Uh, we look forward to the challenge of playing Atlanta. Um, we know what kind of football team they are. They're an uh, explosive team, both sides of the ball and special teams. So we've got to make sure we have a good week of practice, uh, and, and we'll do that. Um, we're, we're lucky enough where we can get outside here and, uh, and this late in the year and still be able to get good quality practices out there. So we'll do that, and um, our guys, you know, they'll work hard. So anyways, time's yours. Yeah, they're gonna. They're just testing things out. We're just gonna see, gradually see how they how they feel. I mean, I can't give you anything until I see them do something. But um, they'll be out there, you know, moving around a little bit, and we'll just see how they how they feel. Getting yeah, yeah, yeah. All the guys. I mean, just. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I just uh, you know he came here with uh, with with the incident, obviously, right? And I think you probably know that. That's why you're here. And so um, you know he's he's handled himself uh, in a good way. Um, there haven't been any issues, which is a, you know a positive. And and then you know he he has the things that he has to do for uh, for the incident. And he he doesn't miss anything. He does everything he's supposed to do, and that's a that's a plus. Point in the third quarter where you took points off the board and kicked a field goal or the penalty gave you a first down. Can you talk about why you did that? What you were looking for there? Yeah, well, normally you don't you don't do that. Um, right. But I thought we were doing okay at about that point, and um, I thought it'd give us an opportunity to, to score. You know, so that's why I did it. Difficult decision at the time. Uh, no, because I thought we were doing okay. You know, if we, if we were struggling, I probably wouldn't have done that. But. I thought at that moment we were moving okay. Danny, in the second half and in overtime, you placed an entire time without an entire position group, the interior defensive linemen, yeah. starters. I mean, uh, how did those guys do? What did you see from Jenkins and Jones and Reyes? And yeah, you know, I thought they, um, I thought they played hard um, and aggressive. I, I thought they, you know, for the most part, were fundamentally sound on what they were doing. I mean, are there plays that they, they need to work on and keep getting better at? Yeah, they do. But uh, a couple of those guys haven't been here very long. So um, for them to do what they're doing, I think, you know, it's a tribute to the kids and the time they're spending, uh, you know, working it. And it's important. You know. yeah, maybe I'm overstating this. I hope I'm not. But it seemed like the addition <coughs> from Sherman in the running game there late in the game seemed to have a, an impact for you guys. I know he's kind of an unsung hero a lot of times. But uh, what was his impact? Yeah, so we kind of moved Sherm all around. You know, he, he's a versatile guy. We've asked him to play tight end, and you know, we put him in slot positions, and most of it's to block. But but he can catch the ball. So the objective is when Doris puts a team together is to have everybody a viable threat to the you know to the defense. So his ability to catch the ball is a positive. So when we put him out there, you still got to honor him in that. But um, the, the part that he brings the most, and what you're getting to, is that that physical aggressiveness and and he did a good job with it you know in the game so how do you try to prepare for an offense like Atlanta? yeah well they're uh, you could argue that they're the best in the league right now right so um you gotta you know you gotta study him obviously and then uh stay fundamentally sound work the game plan have that down and, and play physical football i mean you know that's you know you Speaking gotta, of physical football yeah, it was a it was a physical game. The guys were flying around. Um, it was exciting. You know, it was a had been a fun game to watch um, for people. So that's what the NFL is all about this time of the year. And uh, it was two good 
good teams playing each other, and they got after each other. So a lot of sore bodies. Yeah, um, you know, we've done pretty good with the two-minute stuff. Uh, you know, teams change. I, I, to say that that's what you're going to do, um, teams change in those situations defensively. So uh, you, 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 know, you got to gear it up towards that and kind of think of that when you, you know, when you, when you start using that. Um, but there are a lot of things that go into it. But the guys have done a nice job with it. They put a lot of work into it, and, um, and they've executed well. Yeah, well, you know, there, there's some things. Yeah, that, that's a good question because there's some things there that, that become important. Turnover is one of them. Field position in this type of a game I thought was huge, and we're able to maintain that. You know, we've got a good punter. We're able to maintain the field position without turnovers, um, which ends up uh, which ended up benefiting us. Um, and and then uh, when we needed to kind of crank it up and flex them out and go, we were able to do that. Um, I, you know, I, I thought it would probably be better in the second half than the first half, but I, you know, I'm not prophesied by any means here. It, it was a very close game and could have gone either way. So, but that was uh, what I thought the best formula was. And how much do you stress recovery with the players? Because you play three games in about 11 days. Like yeah. On the road. Yeah. It's not the same week every week. Sure. No. Well, it's weird. No. You said it. Uh, you got a number of games, a couple games coming up here, and just short. Short period of time, so you've got to make sure you take care of yourself. And uh, when you have an opportunity to get off your feet, you get off your feet. When you, if you're banged up a little bit, you get in the training room, you get taken care of. And um, and that's all part of being a professional, understanding the the business that you've you've chosen there. So um, and are in. Adam, and you just talked about the physical part. Of it. What about the the mental and emotional part of it? You guys put a lot of energy into that game Sunday night. Any. Um, Feel like you have to maybe direct uh, guys' attention to the upcoming game, maybe more than you have to normally in a normal week. Yeah, so I, I think uh, this time of the year, <clears throat> the the player you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, and if you're in position to strike, I, I I don't think you can afford to to you know take games off. Not that I I don't believe in that anyways, but surely at this time um, that that can't even be a can't even be an issue. Um, every game is so important right now. Um, it doesn't matter if it's NFC, AFC. It doesn't matter. All the games are important, and um, and so to maintain our focus, our intensity, our health, all those things are are important this time of the year. So you obviously know that because you've been doing this for a while. But do you feel like you, you have a need to maybe make that clear to the guys? Well, sometimes I talk to them. I talk to them every once in a while. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> is, is that part of your message? Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I think he, I mean, it's weird, but I think the crazier it gets, the calmer he is um, for whatever. I mean, that's just how he's wired. I, and it seems to just kind of calm everybody else down. It's a unique thing. Uh, it's one of the things that makes him a great player, I think. So, um, but he handles that just, you know, he handles that very well. Well, I mean, he's a good player, you know, and so normally in big games, your good players show up and and uh, you, you try to dial them up. And now they had they had a plan for him. You saw a couple of times where they had two guys on them and that makes it a little tough. But um, then the other guys stepped up and, and made good plays. So uh, but he's always going to be a part of your game plan. Uh, we'd be foolish not to make him a part. And and, um, and so then you got to kind of overcome the teams you got to try something else uh, if they double them I and mean, we we have moved all over the place uh, we're lucky that he can do that all right thank you okay yep